Pops is 1987.com. Now, when you talk about Just Blaze and some of his production, and like you said, you having the, with his samples, he liked those high pitch samples. Even with the uh, Rock the Mic, how would you, how would you mix those samples? Because, like I said, are, are the ratios and the numbers important when it comes to mixing, or is it more about the feel? Yeah, it's the feel for me. When people will be like, yo, do a three to one, I'm mean, like, you would have to have that exact song recorded that exact way with the same, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like with the same microphone and the same temperature on the same, like it's too much <laughs> vary, you know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. really listen, everything is about here. I can give you like ranges, like a lot of times with vocals, I am doing like three to one, you know what I'm saying? With a really fast attack and, and, and a slower uh, sort of release, you know, but it depends on the, the vocal. Um, I try to just even everything out with the compressor and then do a couple of vocal rides. I try to do less vocal rides with the fader and control everything more sort of with compression. Um, but again, back then we were doing it on tape. So now, even with Pro Tools, I'll go in and I'll go like, oh, this syllable is too loud. I'll just make it lower. Automation. Yeah, automation. Not even with automation, just actually physically just take it down like the audio level. Okay. It's real easy to like even stuff out at this point. But with Justin stuff, it was always me getting it to a point where I like the sample and then I would add a little bit more brightness because he, he just likes everything extra bright more than me. But I know that's for me working with him, I know what he like. And then that's another thing engineers got to realize, like you're working for someone else. You're sort of like a barber, you know what I'm saying? So you go to your barber because you like the way he cuts your hair, but you're telling him how you want your hair cut. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the engineer job. Like, like y'all can argue back and forth. Me and Justin will argue about stuff, but at the end of the day, in the, in the pecking order, he's old, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he he wins out it. because it's his beat, and I'm the engineer. So I gotta make it the way that he wanted. You, you, you get what I'm saying? But it's like two brothers arguing about something. Like, I think this is sound better. Now nah, go we'll do it this way or that way. We used to argue all the time. You know, when he was doing song cry, I was just like, it don't sound right. Like, he was just like, go trust me. Like, wait till I get done. Just, just <laughs> let me, you know what I'm saying? But it would just be no type of thing. But, but at least you know you're dealing with no, it was no yes man. It was none of that going on. So everybody get to speak their piece. Everybody get to say what they want to say. We had Keep It Real Wednesdays, where like you could really, really keep it real and just say whatever you want to say to anybody can't get mad. Round table and everybody just let it all Nah, Wednesday was just a day, like, yo, I wasn't feeling what you said last week. You know what I'm saying? And we used, to have, we used to have Keep It Real Wednesdays was the day like any producer from anywhere, you could just walk in off the street and play beats. And Jay be sitting there, Beans be sitting there, everybody. If he was whack, we didn't want to get laughed out the room. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I seen some of your like favorite producers cry. You know what I'm saying? And walk out the room. Um, but it's also dudes like you walk in there with a hot beat and you just like, yo, take that down the hallway. You, you just made it, you know what I'm saying? Like so 15 yeah. grand real quick. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was a way of getting new producers in. But it was also like the super keep it real day where we talked about anything and everybody could say whatever they want to anybody. I'm talking about you can say it to Dane, you can say it to anybody. And they had to roll with it. It's just how they felt. So keep, we had keep it real Wednesday t shirts, everything. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Now, let me ask you as far as you said earlier, sometimes you have to ask the artist, where are you trying to go with it? And, and I've also heard you say you give your input. Mm -hmm. That's not normal for an engineer. Exactly. So a, lot of engi that. a lot of engineers, your, your job is really just to make the record sound good, or if you're a recording engineer, just to facilitate the record of the record. But that situation was different, again, because it's like we all want camp. So I'm concerned with everybody's career, so I'm kind of going to give my opinion, and then after a certain amount, the artist, you know what I'm saying, allow me to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Freeway allowed me to do that on his album. You know what I'm saying? To give me free could have been like shut up, boo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just but but when we in there and we, we make it, he like yo how this sound. You know what I'm saying? Or like you will hear it on the album, he be like oh you want me you want me mess with that free shit, boo? You know like you hear it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like us having conversations, but at the end of the day, it's their project. So again, I'm like a doctor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your doctor yeah. gonna make a whole bunch of suggestions because he has experience that you don't have. But at the end of the day, you can go get a second opinion. You can, it's like your lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Your lawyer, you look, this is the best thing for your case, now you decide what you want to do. But for the up and coming engineer, but like you said, you it can takes always time get a second. to that point. It takes time to get to that they point. They gotta trust you. 
they got to like, you got to build that relationship with, with the artists, you know what I'm saying? And they got to know that you're vested in them. I, I would do stuff to go above and beyond, like all them artists know. I stay up two, three days to make sure your album make the deadline, for you. you know, like, to make sure it's right and just everything. They know I'm going to go the full length for them, so it's like, and vice versa. I know they're going to go the full length for me, so it's just like, there's a trust issue, you know what I'm saying? That's all it works. See, my thing is you got your average artist who, they're new to it, and they might be sitting in the studio with you or, right. or, with, or with a P-Funk or somebody like that, he say, you know what, I think you should do this. At what point do you feel, feel like the artist should step back and listen to the engineer? I mean, that's again, a lot. No, no, no. But, but again, I'll use the analogy, you're not gonna just go in the barbershop and be like, yo, who's cutting? So you're gonna be like, who the nicest person is? You go to the nicest person, you get the best person for the job, and the reason that you get them is because they have experience doing whatever it is. So if I have a new artist, you know, I try to explain to them, but what I do is I say, okay, here's all the positive, here's the negatives, right? And I'll get, I'll lay everything out for you. What you choose is what you choose. And some artists fail, some artists succeed, but I'm gonna always give you my honest opinion. Now, if you're a new engineer coming up, you gotta gain some experience too. Or if you are, like, say a people or somebody that you know that know what they're talking about, been in the studio a million times, and they got a new artist, that new artist should listen to them. Exactly, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you can, you have to remember because you will, you, you know, my mind just say like stop beating your head against the wall. Like you gotta realize that point where it's like this is a, this is this, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, I'm getting paid for this. So if you wanna come in here and just like burp on a microphone for two hours, all right, I'm getting paid. Do you? Yeah, do you. Shit, half the rappers come in the studio, pay the time, and write their raps on the top. Yeah, that don't, that don't make sense. Like the studio is to record music. Yeah. It's not really to write music. If you, you too and like Bono and I'm like, you got a budget to do something like that. <laughs> but in today's day, especially in today's music business, like in 2000, 2001, we was drunk, you know, in the, in the, in the money. Yeah. We were selling CDs for $18. You know, cats were doing $2 million video. There's a lot of money floating around. Yeah. So like now, you can't afford that. Like now you gotta go back to like writing at the crib. Be smart with your, be smart with your time. Or even smarter is to go like buy an inbox. You can go to the guitar center and get you a little uh, the little screen thing, record your vocals at home, and then you only really gotta go to the studio to mix. You know what I mean? Like that's really what it is. Like shave off the money. Even record companies now is asking me to do like in the box mix. Because they brothers just records ain't selling. You know what I'm saying? If you if you watch the playing field. And that's another thing, if you just gonna be in the music business, don't just do like, I'm just an engineer and that's all I do. Like you gotta know, you gotta, yeah, you gotta know what's going on in your whole arena. So a lot of my older engineers, like they priced themselves out of the game. When the game fell, I'm like, yo, it's like a drug game, like prices drop. Like you gotta, you gotta, now your product, that brick gotta be down to like eight, my dude, else you ain't gonna move no bricks. You got to, you know what I'm saying? So. You gotta, that's what I mean, you gotta watch the playing field to see what's going on. So, if, if, if I know that record companies is doing that, I'm gonna do everything I can to keep my cost down on this end, and then, because the, the worst thing about it is, they gonna give you, the, if you sign, or if you're coming in, they are gonna give you a couple little extra dollars, but that's taken away from your marketing budget. Yeah. You know what I mean, you only have, a, when you hear somebody say, yo, I signed for $2 million, they ain't put $2 million in that person's pocket. That's their budget. You know what I mean? So if everything takes away from everything. Every meal, every, yo, I need 10 dudes with me in the studio, order the food, I need to take five dudes with me on the road, and all that, all that costs. That add up, man. All right, now, back to the engineer. What's, what's some of your, your favorite plugins right now? I know Waves and Sound Toys. First of all, what do you use to record? No, I say, what do you use Again, to it depends on, it depends on what the session is, but for most of the time for like, Female vocals, I like to do like a uh, like a Neve 1073, uh, maybe with like a CS800, you know. But uh, uh, for most of the time for rap, I use like a U87, like real annoying U87, real classic microphone, um, with like a 737. Uh, what else? A Neve, a Neve preamp is just it's, it's more for, for people that just starting out. It's better for you to spend more money on a quality preamp. Like you want to get quality in whatever you get, but it's better for you to buy a more expensive preamp than a more expensive microphone. Like if you got a $2,000 microphone with like a real crappy preamp, it's not gonna work. But if you got a gangster preamp, you can go get a $500 like Rode mic and it is, it'll make the Rode's mic sound impeccable. Now let me ask, what is the importance of that? Cause like I said, when I sat with Just Blaze, he talked about his studio. He's like, I got a $50,000 studio. Everything sound great coming out of here. Yeah. But the key is to make it sound good coming out of your, your Chevy 
right. you should be speaking. Absolutely. It's really important now. The preamp is like the first stage before you get into the computer. It used to be going to tape. You used to have a lot more leeway when we was going to tape because tape made everything sound better. Mm -hmm. But now you, everybody recording to a computer. So the preamp is really important because it's going to put the character, the sound, into whatever you record before it hits the computer. You know what I'm saying? That's the the, the biggest component is the preamp. What, what, what you're using to turn the sound up or down or, or control that sound. So for me, I'd rather spend my money on, like I said, a quality preamp and, you know, like a rose mic, you know what I'm saying? I, I, again, I'm a realist, like I, I know what people are going through when they in their bedroom and you only got a couple of hours and you're trying to figure out what you want to do and you may possibly have kids, you got bills, you know, you know I, I know what that is. So everybody ain't gonna have a fit, but you don't need a 50,000 dollar studio to get it done. Like, you can, you can go get some good stuff for, you know what I'm saying, if you save up like a little G and go on a store and get busy, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then that show what your commitment to the thing is. It's like. Like be, be real, I'm real honest. Like, okay, you keep saying to me like you want to record and you ain't got no equipment, but you buy a hundred dollars worth of weed every other day. Like sneaks, clothes, all that. Yeah, you got the freshest Jordans yeah, on. You got yeah. like like sacrifice a couple of that and go buy some stuff that's going like you know help the rest of your life or help your career. Or how serious are you if, if you can't even sacrifice that? You know what I mean? My my crew we used to like. There was no record. I could yo. I could imagine if like Tracy and all of us had the ability to record in our room. Like we had to throw parties. I was like, yo, I'm gonna take fifty dollars off the party just because it's my crew. And the money that we made from throwing parties was studio time, so that we could go in and record records, record records. Like we had to pay for that. And you better be absolutely ready. If you get in there and you do it twice and you ain't got your, I mean, you ain't, you ain't prepared at home. Get out of there. We got another thing that's ready. Like, <laughs> we, we was on a clock. Yeah, yeah. You gotta sacrifice. Like, you used to be even, the, even the basement too. Like I said, it was really pressed for time in the basement too. All right. Now, what do you like? What program do you use to record? Like Logic, Pro Tools, or does it not matter? The industry that situation. Now, the industry standard is Pro Tools, but I like Logic. I love Logic just because of, of um, the versatility of it. Logic. Always been better with MIDI, right? And caught up. But I'm seeing a lot of cats, like especially overseas, and a lot of my younger cats that just start right now. They mess with Ableton. Just because Ableton is like so, it, it, it can do anything. Time stretching is real quick. It's a lot of stuff you can do in Ableton. It's not really about the program, it's about you, right? What, what you, you do feel most comfortable with. with. What you feel comfortable with, what you do with the program. I, I'm a cat that grew up, again, I'm, I'm aging myself, but I grew up on NPCs, you know? So my production things, I like to touch buttons and pads and all that. So that's why I mess with the Renaissance now. Like I did a, um, a nice little deal with Akai where I'm, I'm a spokesman for them. But I ain't get into it just to be a spokesman for Kai. Like I really like the product. See, yeah. So I wanted to make sure it was like, okay, as you transfer what we had in the analog world into something that interface with the computer, I want to make sure that the feel is the same. So it's like you could make a guitar sound with a keyboard, mm -hmm. but if a dude been like practicing all his life and studied like you know what I'm saying a guitar, he want to play a guitar this way, not this way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing with me. Like, I've been making music my whole life with an MPC and SB1200. So I want to still do that, but have the ability to get in my computer. And that's what the, you know, that's what the Renaissance does for me. So, I, you know, I end up mixing 85% of the stuff on Pro Tools. But if, it, if I had my way, I would just use Logic, period. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, you said you got the deal with Akai. Any yeah. other uh, products or things we can expect coming yeah, from yeah, the other ones? stuff out there. I got, um, I got a headphone brand out there. Okay. And that was really my purpose behind It's with a company from Copenhagen called IAI. Uh, so it's the TM1s, there's a young Google edition of those, you can get them online, right? But my whole idea with that was like, the Dr. Dre George, when they approached me, it was like headphones, like headphones, like, you know, everybody knew headphones. But it gave me the opportunity to do the opposite of the Dr. Dre George. So like, Dr. Dre and them was like, yo, everybody got MP3s, so we're gonna make a headphone that give you the, the, the actual sound of what it would sound like if you was in the studio. Right, because yeah. the MP3 is blew down. But it has an EQ on it. So you as an engineer, or as a mixer, anything you put through there, it's not gonna be truly what it is because it got an EQ in yeah. it already. Yeah. Right. So with my headphones, I try to make them flat so that dudes that's in their bedroom, you know what I'm saying, everybody don't have access to a studio, so you can have a real flat studio reference in the headphones to be able to mix your records in so that it can do just that. When you go from the car to the studio to the little boom box, it's, it's, it's extremely accurate. That's the whole point. So mine are, like I said, they're the exact opposite of that so that you can get a really great mix. Um, that's another product I got. But it's, it's, you know, it's a bunch of stuff we're doing. I'm writing a book right now just, just to put the engineering stuff down. Um, 
because it ain't really been thrown on, on a hip hop, mm -hmm. like urban. I don't want to say hip hop, but like just the music we do, it's urban music. Um, and music that's, that's involved with using a computer and, and things like that hasn't really, you know, you could, you could buy a book on the Beatles. You could buy a book on, you know, damn near every rock and roll group that was out there, but it's nothing really on the technical side of like hip hop. So I'm trying to get people that. Um, teaching at USC now. Um, doing that, so I fly out there like once a month to do that. Yeah, appreciate it. Do up through a whole day of just teaching, man. Shout out to everyone. Um, it's just a bunch of stuff, man. I'm still, you know, running around doing a whole bunch of lectures and just, just teaching became something I fell in love with. So I just try to do a lot of it. Yeah. Do, do you feel like because the average consumer has no idea of how important what you do is to their listening pleasure? Yeah, the, engin the engineer is a background dude. Like I got lucky for granted, but you're supposed to be. Like, like, at the end of the day, if you go to a show, nobody goes to the show and be like, damn, the engineer really did his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, the only time you mention an engineer is when he's fucking up. You be like, yo, the show sounded horrible. Who engineered that? That's the only time you even think about the engineer. I can tell you a time <laughs> where me and my wife will say, damn, man, the lights, the engineer, everybody doing their thing, and it was actually your work. Mm -hmm. Watch the throne tour. Don't oh, ask you about that. It. Best show I've ever Appreciate been to in my life. If y'all didn't get to see it, sorry for y'all. Best show I've ever been to in my life. What was that like? Like I said, I was, that was I, amazing. For me, that was dope, because that was like the first time where I got to be off the stage, mm -hmm. right? Because for so long, like for, for that couple years, I was um, DJing for Jay. I was on the stage, so I'm like at work and I'm watching it, you know what I'm saying? But then when they did Lots of Throne, Kanye DJ was DJing, and I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, out in front, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's what was really dope about that, because I got to like watch it from a fan standpoint. And then Kanye creatively is just crazy, like him coming up with the, with the two uh, different columns and like visually all the stuff that he did, it was, he made the visuals as important as the music, which I thought was a good thing, you know what I mean? You get to see how he takes art, and then we, we, we sometimes don't, recognize ourselves as fine art. We look at other people and other things as fine art, and it's like, nah, we're fine art too. You just gotta make it in a tasteful way. You gotta be done right. You put the importance to it, and then people will look at it as, you know what I'm saying, fine art. Now, also, taking what you just said about Kanye, I've heard you talk about listen, hip hop saving people, and taking from hip hop what you can and making it your own. Mm -hmm. And Kanye is taking hip hop and I don't think there's one person who can't say they didn't laugh at the pink polo or this and that. Now he's a fashion icon. Yeah. Um, people I, laughed at the Pharrell hat the first night he had it on. Now you see me walk around with it. Yeah. You know, maybe you can go a little deeper into that because you've talked about it from a, a well, that, perspective of piracy, which I thought was very deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, what, on, on one level, that goes back to the essence of what hip hop is, right? Taking something and flipping it to another meaning because you don't have. So it's just taking whatever you have to utilize to get something. That's the essence of, or should I say, the ethos of, of what hip hop started as. Like, okay, we don't have instruments, but we got record players, so we can make the record player our instrument. Yeah. Or I don't have drums, but I could beat on the table. You know what I'm saying? And if I don't got a table, I could beatbox. You know, like somehow I'm gonna get it done. So that's the essence of hip hop is taking somebody else's music, but representing it, flipping it in some way that makes it your own, or, or uh, you know, Rakim said, I, you know, uh, uh, jazz in a quiet storm, take a beat and hook it up in the hip hop form. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what type of genre it is, I'm, I'm gonna put it in hip hop form. So if you take that and go with everything, hip hop teaches you that, to take whatever you have and make it fresh. You know, like, make it where people want it, or do it in some way where like, before us, nobody would have looked at the average construction boot that dudes is wearing outside as a fashion thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We made we made construction Tim's fashion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about that. We we could we could take anything and flip it and, and that's hip hop. So for us, then we, we invented the remix. We invented like all of those things. So with, with, when piracy came in, that was my whole point of what I was saying. I was like, I was trying to explain to the record companies like y'all not doing you can't you can't stop me from sending you an email. First of all, y'all don't understand the playing field. So instead of, they tried to fight it. They tried to fight it. I was, yeah. I was in Def Jam working at the time, right? Yeah. They tried to fight Napster. They was trying to sue them. I'm like, nah, you don't sue them. You go grip them up and put them yeah. underneath for you. But they, instead of instead of thinking about where we was at, they kept trying to fight it, fight it. And I'm like, oh, you can't fight progression. Like, 
people, the internet is here. You can't take it back. You know what I'm saying? It's like anything else that hit. You can't never like, you can't just take crack away. Like it's here now, you know what I'm saying? You try to get people off of it, yeah, but it's like, it's here, it's gonna be here, right? Same thing with the internet, it's just like it's here. Don't fight it, get into it, learn it. Look, the pirate is showing you a hole in what you do. Yeah, For some reason, people going to him. That's why bootleg liquor dudes is open on Sundays. Yeah. Cause the liquor spot is not, they found a hole. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. found a hole. You can't get liquor on Sunday, that's gonna be my biggest day for selling alcohol. Yeah. All right, great. I'm a pirate, I, I'm, a, I'm an alcohol pirate. You know what I'm saying? I found a hole. So, it was real ill, I met this dude, um, uh, he wrote a book called uh, The Pirate's Dilemma, mm -hmm. right? I'm trying to remember his name, cause he, he works at, um, He's at, he's at BitTorrent now, Matt Mason. Y'all okay. should all get that book, Matt Mason, um, Pirates Dilemma, right? This is like 2008, 2009 he dropped this. He's explaining exactly where we are now, right? But the record company just wasn't listening to me. We had a we had a meeting in Def Jam where they took us all to, to uh, Foxwood and had a big retreat and all that. And they let us ask questions as a whole company. So I basically raised my hand and I was like, how are we gonna sell music when music is free? And they looked at me like I was crazy. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like, my kids don't ask me to buy CDs, though. If this, again, this goes into knowing the playing field. Like, my kids can care less about buy, purchasing a CD. They not of that culture. Yeah. Streaming is it. Yeah. That's where every, our streaming is going to make every artist extremely rich. That's how you're going to get your money back, right? You sort of, like, figured it out, right? Yeah. Streaming, again, went up, like, I think, like, 34%. Wow. Physical is just going down, 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 and even the purchasing of CDs online is going down. People just stream music, right? The only physical thing that goes up is that vinyl is like getting a little resurgence. So a lot of kids is, is back into buying vinyl and 45s and things like that, and the vinyl's going up, right? But streaming is it. Perfect example, maybe about two weeks ago, somebody got to my credit card number or whatever, right? Cool. I, I show up my credit cards, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not cool, no, but like, you know what I'm saying? That's not the point of the story. I shut off my credit cards, yeah. which means that I gotta redo my iTunes and redo everything. You know what my kids did for a week? Yo, Dad, come on, the Netflix, man. The Netflix, the Netflix, the Netflix. Put the Netflix back on. We can't get on Netflix. To them, that's like the cable going out. Yeah. Yeah. They can't get on Netflix? That's like the cable being off. So yeah. you realize to this generation that streaming is everything. They don't, they think of a song, all that like, Sunday, put on a record and clean the house, YouTube just be on. Yeah. And they look up whatever they want and, and, and they, they don't care about buying the out, streaming, everything is streaming. Why you think Apple paid all that money for the Beats headphones? <laughs> it ain't about the Beats headphones. Don't, don't get it twisted. Yeah. It's about Apple looking at the playing field and be like, yo, we dominate everything. We took the music business away. We're a computer. We make computers and phones. And we took the music business away from the music business, yeah. right? But the only place where they get their ass kicked is streaming. You know what I'm saying? SoundCloud is killing them. You, you know, yeah. All of those streaming yeah. things is killing them. So with Jimmy Alvin making the streaming service, that's what Apple really wanted. They're trying to get in, into the streaming business. And if I can associate that with a brand that's already hot in the streets, all the more good. So I, that's why they bought beats. Streaming is the most important thing. So I tell artists all the time, put your content out there, put the content out there, put the content out there, right? Karis One was at my house and he was like, charity is the fastest way to get rich. Meaning you're gonna have to give away some stuff to get some money in. That's deep right there. It ain't even that deep. <laughs> If you are a drug dealer, you have to put out testers for people to know that your dope is the best dope. Not to put it in that frame of mind, but this is not a new thought process. You know what I'm saying? You put out testers. And then the dope fiends be like, yo, over there on um, Wickahawken and like such and such, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. Yeah. What are they saying? <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Exactly. But you gotta, you gotta at least give it out first, right? And what you'll realize later is that everything that you gave away where cats is like, my, a lot of our older cats like, well, I'm not with this free CD thing, I, I don't come from that. I'm like, all right, watch all these young cats later on when they start streaming all this money and they getting a half a cent per stream, what they check start looking like in a year's time because people start streaming and they have so much content up that now YouTube pays. When you get to a certain level of views, YouTube pays. 
All these streaming services are gonna pay. Your, the uh, Serato that everybody uses now, the next step in the Serato that they're doing is they making it so that for the longest, you, you realize that clubs that, if you sell alcohol and you play music, you're supposed to report what music you play because that is helping your business sell alcohol which it gets done in like major clubs. Like if I go over Europe and play like an Ibiza, they do that, they require you to like do a list. But every hip hop club, I've never been asked to supply a list. My point being is now with the technology, Serato has the list of what you just played. There's gonna be a button where you can just hit it, upload it, and Serato is gonna be starting to give everybody checks. Like yo, this song played these many hundreds of times in the United States on Friday. So now, like, we want, if you just put your music out there, there's going to be revenue streams, but the record companies are still trying to sell you a CD. Okay. Okay. I mean, like, they're they behind. Hip Hop's is 1987.com. That I donate, man. Leave the nigga alone that donate, man. You don't you don't fuck with the nigga that donate. I never knew of of how the cops could try to bring a nigga down when you out here doing something. I got a two-year-old fucking son. He don't want to see me in jail. 